again, thank you so much for making your time. Um, the whole dog killing spree going on in Kingwali is becoming very complex. And again, my name's uh, Mukela Usho. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the founder and the executive director of uh, Refugee News, Kingwali News. Uh, we wanted to get a perspective from you uh, exactly what's going on because for us the feeling we have is that um, you know the decision that was taken by the OPM even when it claims that it, it involved uh, the Refugee Welfare Council leaders uh, it somehow did not resonate with the majority and um, you know you've been a victim um, you've been temporarily arrested if you would clarify on that um, um, you've lost, you've lost your cattle to, um, you know, this conflict. So, would you please tell us what's going, what's going on, and what's the problem with the dogs there? Okay, uh, my name is Jacob Ndani Binama. I'm the editor in chief of Tangwalista, and uh, actually, I would like to brief you a bit how it came about. Because, as you heard, the information is that. Uh, they say that they discuss, they discuss with the council, but the information on the ground, I even talked to my chairman, and my chairman said uh, they were just called and were told that they uh, go and tell people that we are coming to kill the dog. They were never involved in the discussion. Okay. And uh, so what led to your arrest? I mean, what actually happened? How did you end up in jail? Uh, the episode of my arrest actually occurred on the 13th of this month and uh, it was just in the morning I had gone to the center and uh, when I came back home I found uh, my residence room was full of people. Uh, there were about 47 dog killers who were armed with the whole uh, big, big metals, robes who, who, which were being held by the LPM protection is Ranger, plus the heavily armed the policemen. And they, when I, I found them at home, I just had to move to get space to pass because the home was full. When they told me that they, I give them a dog to kill, but they, I told them I've not moved with the dog. I, the doors, they had already opened the doors. So I told them you can march and even check the the bed if you find it there you check i have no problem and this happened after they had they killed i had two dogs after they had killed one uh, from my house and even blood spilled in the on the floor when my children were seen and actually they were traumatized the second dog was uh, actually injured and after it was injured uh it ran away it took refuge and left the place so they had come on Saturday for the dog, and they, when he when he confronted me and asked me that amidst the crowd, I had no say, but I had him order that we have to go to the police, and I had no option. I only even requested to keep my phone in the house before I go with them, but they refused. And thereafter, I had the dog killer shouting that. Uh, I was proud the other day with the camera, I was shooting them the photographs, and they took me to police. When I reached there, there was no point other than just the, him ordering the police to put me in the cell. And moreover, the same as we reached at the police before he put me inside, there were some other refugees who were having the same case with me, saying that they had refused to give out the dogs to be killed. Uh, one of the ladies, Painted, and they actually was picked and crushed for treatment, and they, the rest remain outside. But for me, he forced that I have to be locked up in the cells, and indeed I was locked for six hours. I didn't write any statement. Uh, it was from his order, and it was again from his order that I be out of the cells. And he said before the OC that the exercise is running for three months, and they have to kill. Even the dog which is vaccinated. That's what it is going to say. It's a it's a very emotional story. Uh, dogs, obviously, as a reporter, as someone uh, who understands 
about the environment, we know dogs are very important in a lot of ways. Uh, they are part of our ecosystem. They clean up the environment. Uh, they are pets. A lot of people look at dogs as, uh, you know, something to rely on for hunting. Um, it's a companion. Um, you know, I think uh, dogs are just a very important part, you know, of the African tradition in a lot of ways. And uh, I think having such a decision is horrible. So you've, uh, you've characterized you know, these actions as hostile, corrupt, and you've actually called the OPM as molesting the refugee community. What does that mean? Uh, Turn again, please. The statement you've given about OPM, I've not got it properly. Please, can you pronounce the word? Sure, better? sure. sure. Uh, so you've, uh, you've, re you've, you've referred to this whole scenario as you know, very deep rooted in you know being hostile, corrupt, and molesting the refugee community. I mean, why do you have to say that? Uh, because as they actually the acts that they are doing in the community, they are not good. They are not mm -hmm. valuing as human beings. What they are doing, they just sit down. A few people decide. Or what is of interest on their side. I may say, like, uh, for example, mm -hmm. some reason that uh, after the dog bite, when uh, the OPM comes in and begins killing dog, some uh, some people may see it. Those who are not uh, actually vigilant may see that they are having mercy over the refugees. But indeed, they are after that allowance which they are earning. And they even at mm -hmm. something like this, I had the story that from the dog killers that they were even not paid enough of the allowance that they were promised. So their aim, they have got just an aim, but in reality, what they are inducing in the society is the violence. Interesting. And uh, just to be curious, like how much is each of these dog killers being paid to do this job? Uh, information came out that each had been promised to be paid the 20,000 shillings. Uh, that's what I heard because uh, uh, some of them, uh, they can, cannot talk to a person like me because when they see me, they have to turn off because of the act they were doing. But the information holds that they were promised 20,000 per day. And uh, after they worked for about uh, uh, 10 days, that the guy said that he... They are many in number because they were 47, but that day is not there. It was reduced, I don't know, to 6,000. And they, I understand that they are even complaining. Okay. And um, just to put the record clear here, there are those who are going around blaming Mr. Wenge on the team. But it seems, though, one of our reporters spoke to Mr. Wenge, and he said, it's just orders from above. Do you think he's at the core of this or it's uh, the camp commandant that is orchestrating all these scares? Actually, when I tried, because writing a story, you don't just wake up and say you write a story like such. Uh, something which is sensitive to the community and you have got to do enough news a gathering from reliable resources because after I had the information, I had to go to the MPI and I interviewed the medical doctor. And after I interviewed the medical doctor, that's when I real I started realizing the the weaknesses in the operation because the numbers which the the Gwenja was saying of the dog fights and the, what the OC police was saying were not corresponding with the the MTI because the MTI was giving me, gave me the number as 28, and the steadily recovering, but they also were saying they were, I don't know, 57. So they, they were escalating the numbers and causing confusion all over. Okay, so the statistics were not correct. Is that correct? There are are not correct and even uh, when they started the the idea of uh, killing the dogs there was one time i talked to Gwenje. he told me that he had uh, killed uh, one thirty dogs and then the host was telling me that they were 54 and uh, after some three or four days 
the Boyenja uh, could not talk to me again after he had the, actually attacked me at home, but I heard from the OC, he had already jumped to over 100. And actually the figure I used was over 100. Interesting, very, very complex things going on there. Um, okay, so we switch gears a little bit here. Obviously, you understand there are those who are victims of dog bites. And, uh, you know, they may say it's justified to kill these dogs. So why you and the rest are against killing the dogs? Uh, to my case, I may come up as the, an analyst of uh, what these people made as decision because uh, from grassroots and uh, from the early times, it's not the first time the dog is biting a human being. We grew up in communities where there were dogs, and even here in Uganda there are dogs, but there's no day I've ever heard that they are, still, they are moving from home to home and killing dogs. Whatever uh, that I know that I may put forward and explain that it should have taken place, Whenever such episode will happen, sometimes it may not be even a dog fight. It may be a wolf or a canine. What do they do? Uh, they always call the community. They have a meeting and they, they alert the community to be aware and begin hunting for the dogs which are roaming around as they call the veterinary services to be brought on the ground. And that, that is announcement now of massive vaccination of all domestic dogs. That's how it's always done. And the same issue has happened to the host community whereby the vet doctor came and actually started the massive uh, vaccination And as I even interviewed, I visited the camp as he heard of the episode and he came exactly to talk to the commandant and begin vaccinating the dogs that are in the refugee community. But the commandant told him that for him, he, the dogs in the community will not be vaccinated, but he is ready to kill them that she had agreed with the community. So I don't know the people she agreed with. And, uh, okay, so you've talked of vaccination, but just to set the record clear here, why they didn't take that path? Is it expensive to get the vaccine? Was there some other reason? Oh. Uh, for that case, I will take you to your first point, our first question that you, or a view you raised to me, whereby you, the, the, the decision made, as I, I told you, was not the correct one. It was just a haste. Because mm -hmm. when you pay a dog at 20,000 and uh, when vaccinating the dog, it's only 4,000 shillings, of which we could not even demand the office to pay for us, but we, the owners of the dog, we are ready to pay for us. It's just a little more. 4,000 oh. shillings. Okay. Okay. So the, the dog owners, um, the dog owners wanted to have, uh, you know, wanted to pay the, you know, the, the costs for the rabies, but it seems though the settlement commandant, the OPM establishment, and the refugee welfare um, chairman were just up to killing the dogs. Now, <clears throat> there is a problem, and um, you know some some residents of Kingwali are complaining that their leaders being complicit in the whole killing, you know, the dog killing spree that's going on right now. Um, makes them feel like they can't trust their local leaders anymore. Now, we do have elections coming up at some point. Um, do you think uh, some will lose um, in these coming elections of the Refugee Welfare Councils? Um, what are the effects of like, you know, these local leaders being involved in such a, a terrible um, decision? Uh, before I answer you that, I just want to speak at home of saying that the, the council was involved in killing the dog. Uh, the idea is they were just called and told to inform people that they are coming to kill dogs. 
there was no share of the information because if they were to share the information, they were to come down and talk to the dog owners and then take to them the report, the feeling of the dog owners. And now, when it comes to elections, uh, I may explain that uh, currently we do not have uh, an elected chairperson. The elected chairperson went for resettlement in Sweden a few months ago, almost two months ago, before before Corona came in. And uh, uh -huh. someone who assumed the office is just was the vice chairperson and uh, may not be very suitable for that position because uh, she, when it comes to communication and the personality, I don't think she can uh, she can represent the community. Okay, I see. So there is an interim person uh, working there. Um, if possible, if I may recommend, I may say that if they, they were fair, they would call for the elections and the people elect for uh, so that we have uh, the elected fair pass. Okay, interesting. So they have to replace uh, the interim chairperson. I, I, yeah. Again, um, we, we, just a few other questions here. Um, we had from our report that uh, it seems they've only killed 400 dogs, but according to the estimates, the refugee camp has close to 10,000 of these dogs. Um, we also had that Bwenge and his team were looking to extend the contract so that they were able to get rid of all the 10,000 dogs in the refugee camp. Um, would you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, maybe when I talk of the statistics, you know, uh, with, they did not involve us in the statistics and they actually, uh, what I comment is that they, what they are doing actually I note and uh, I'm not in a way in line with them because uh, when it comes to the dog bite, obviously the dogs that they can uh, see rabies, can have rabies are the dogs which are staying loitering around. Uh, the veterinary term they call them stray dogs, of which the law of Uganda says that uh, only stray dogs can be killed. But now these ones are targeting the domestic dogs in the homes of people which are innocent. Imagine an innocent dog comes and comes and find it and kill it. And then he's saying that he's trying to solve the problem of ant rapists. And now, where, what have they done now to these stray dogs that are loitering in the settlement and they are still there? What have they solved? If mm -hmm. not just the not the interest of getting allowance of, from the UNHCR funds and the benefiting on their side. What have they done to the stray dogs which are still loitering in the city? Uh, uh, is the community safe, safe now? Is it secure? Because they have just killed the, the home guards, the dogs that we have are home guards. They actually uh, domest, uh, keep domestic security. Now they, are, they have deprived us of that right but have they solved the problem? Mm -hmm. Interesting. And uh, so if you would describe briefly, how, yes. are, people f yeah. how are people feeling um, about their dogs being killed? Would you like describe that briefly? What are some of the reactions? Uh, general feeling. A general feeling uh, to a few of people I interviewed when I was doing a gathering of news, uh, uh, they say uh, the manner in which they are killing the dogs, the violence which they are applying is making the refugees reflect of the past actions that happened in their ori uh, home of origin that made them to flee away. And uh, <laughs> even now, uh, some refugees are hearing even I see. And even some are saying that actually the boys for this uh, who are members of this field school, they say they are being trained on how to be muscles and tomorrow they may practice that muscles uh, actions even after the dog killing activity is over and they may be dangerous to our community because they are being trained to do muscles actions. 
Yeah. Uh, oh my goodness. Yes. Um, so we have a situation here um, where people want to make money from killing these dogs. Um, where you know the echelons in OPM locally, they in Kingwali took a bad decision that did not reflect the majority of the opinions of the people. And we have um, a feeling from people who feel they shouldn't have lost their dogs in such a kind of situation. And, and no one is listening to them. This is really very, very, you know, um, you know it's, it's very depressing. It's not a good story. I've heard from many uh, of the refugees resettled here commenting when we did post um, the link with details about this dog killing. And uh, some have asked me a question, which I also wanted to, to, to ask you here. What can we do right now? Or what could be some of your, of your suggestions? What would you suggest people should do to help stop this you know, massive dog killing that is going on? Uh, because People are like, okay, what if we fundraise, but what, when we have the money, what, what are we going to do? That's the question. Me, myself, I'm involved in a fundraiser right now, but we don't know what exactly has to be done because it does really fail. It's unfair to refugees who take care of their dogs. If it was just for um, you know, those stray dogs moving around trading centers, it would make a lot of sense, but they are going to people's homes, find your dog, and kill it. You know? That's not fair. So the question I'm, as, I'm asking you, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Binama, is what, what can be done to stop the spree, the killing of dogs that is going on? Uh, for my case, I'm of the feeling that uh, uh, there should be an uh, organization which is uh, a bit independent, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, should come in and uh, State an inquiry and move from home to home to the owners of the dogs who, who are killed. They record, come up with the evidence, and the, the case be filed so that the, those the wrongdoers are brought to book. Okay. And um, one of the options was could people hire a lawyer to be involved? Could people use the funds raised to buy the rabies? Uh, vaccine and see a way to challenge OPM and ask them if you know the remaining dogs can just be vaccinated and you know see if they would be you know swayed to stop the killings. Do you think any of these two options would really work? Uh, I'm talking and uh, actually advising and uh, strongly recommending that uh, there is a, a, an information with, when you come to that which you may have not captured and taken it with much seriousness. Mm -hmm. There is a, there is denial of vet services to the refugee community. You okay. imagine when the, when the commander is stopping the vet doctor to come in the settlement and vaccinate the dog, she has those powers of denying more than 100,000 people to have their rights. She's just denying as a person, as the office, and uh, now, even if you get the money, uh, most dogs have been killed. And even if you get the money for vaccination, the issue is not, there is no lack. Of, uh, the owners of the dogs did not fail to vaccinate, but they were denied the services. That's why I say that if possible, uh, there should be uh, an inquiry into this act that happened so that they come and record information and the case be filed because a one person cannot come in and they actually they deny people services in the name of being the head of the settlement. And at the same time, it's breaking the laws, the international law, and breaking also the, the laws of Uganda and treating people in a human way. Interesting. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll keep this you know, going. Please let us know if there is anything that develops after this. Uh, but again, thank you so much for making this time for Kingwali News. Uh, we really appreciate um, you know, the work you're doing there with reporting. Again, our guest was uh, Jacob S. Binama. He's the editor-in-chief of Kingwali Star, a local refugee uh, newspaper. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Binama, for making this time uh, for Kingwali News. We really appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, bye.
and your support actually is welcomed by the community and i hope everybody will feel that there is somewhere somebody who is actually caring about their lives that's very true have a good evening good evening too okay bye. Yeah.